Welcome back. Uh, this is still the Policy Reaching You Live from Abuja. I've been joined now by Dr. Suleiman Abdullahi. He's a policy analyst. Uh, he's also a scholar and he's here to do some justice uh, to Kogi State. Kogi State has a new governor, has had a, good, a new governor uh, for a couple of months now, uh, but he will be officially sworn in as the administration of uh, Governor Yaya Bello winds up. Uh, just over the weekend. So we'll be speaking on the administration, what is expected going forward for Kogi State, and perhaps what is even expected going forward for the outgoing governor who will now move to other issues, I believe. Good afternoon and welcome, Dr. Abdullah. It's a pleasure meeting it's, you once It's good more. to have you. Yes, welcome. Thank you very much. All right. Um, so, first of all, how, is, how does it feel as a Kogi uh, indigenous resident to have a new administration on the corpse of inauguration? Very, very, very interesting, and uh, it's a good one. We have moved from one uh, platform to the other politically. We have seen the eight years mm -hmm. complete tenure of Yaya Bello that he will be handed over by uh, January 27 on Saturday. And so, is it an atmosphere of excitement or sadness that he's leaving? <coughs> uh, what, what's it like, really? Yes, I could say it should be an excitement for every Kugaite. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at it, for you to run a state successfully from one year to eight years completely, mm. as a leader, you need to appreciate and thank God for the life spent in the service of what? Of your fatherland, your state, humanity, and uh, the nation at large. That is number one. Number two, it is an excitement as I explained that, look, we need to be happy and rejoice that, look, one of us today from Central have actually lead the state progressively and constructively with mm -hmm. all sense of what direction as far as leadership style and quality is concerned we need to appreciate the person of Yaya Bello and totally if you look at him why we need to appreciate him most especially is a look we have have a leadership different leadership trajectory today in uh, in Kogi state that with some kind of new political and administrative uh, you know, taste that we can appreciate and everybody will go home smiling that look, there is a kind of reform in Kogi State. And this is why that it called for what? For a bigger celebration. And you look at it at all, you know, measuring it all to carve it all. At the end of the day, you look at even traditional institutions that are have been lying down fellow without hearing about them, their effectiveness. He has made a lot of changes that everywhere today is celebration. You hear a of drum from one cultural dance display in uh, Kogi Central, Kogi West, Kogi, all over the places. And uh, this gives us a kind of a uh, serious, uh, you know, excitement. It can give us, uh, you know, a pleasure and a uh, call for celebration. And we need to celebrate one of ours, particularly, particularly Mr. Madin, in Kogi Central. We have never had a political leader since the demise of what of uh, uh, the first executive governor of, Ku of uh, Kwara State, Alaja de Mwata, and uh, the late Seto Eti Ahmed. We are having Yaya Bello Adoda as young as he is, as vibrant as he is, as intelligent and calculative he is administratively in politics. You see, he, we need to celebrate it because without him, we would have been where we are. So, are you saying there were no uh, shortcomings in administration? You know, through his administration, there was always the talk of salaries. Some persons even came over to the studio with screenshots of their, you know, salary earnings. You, some very um, funny amounts. Uh, there was uh, also some other issues um, where the governor or his party was accused of violent attacks and so on and so forth. So, what about these issues? Uh, are they things that have successfully been laid to rest, or questions he might continue to answer let, wherever it goes? Let me be emphatic and be direct to, the, to this question. Mm. You look at it. In every aspect, you have advantage and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. And in life, it is a two-way traffic. You have the, even we can say it is a three-way traffic, you have the bad, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But thank God, we have seen it is 80-20. We have seen the 80% of His Excellency here at Dr. Bello to be good and excellent. The 20% has been human. You mm -hmm. saw some errors and mistakes from human. And particularly, if you are going administration, been the first time, the his fourth four, ten, uh, four years mm. in this office, you should expect some kind of uh, miscalculation and misfiring. But if at the long at the long run he get it right and put things in places as expected, 
put in the right peg in the right hole and that's we gives him a kind of good look he have learned through over the process and he's now a perfect game player when it comes to governance in the in Koji state so this is it we have issues that we still have we have to look at like the issue of salary you mentioned yes we could say there's elapses gaps there but thank god that he is successfully handed over to a apc governor and the same person one of his own principal officer and from the same constituency of which that template that template will be looked at and redress well, allegations are also dug in that election and that it might not have been completely fair is that something uh, that uh, again that still needs an answering to Yes, let me be saying, Mr. Martin, you see, in, when it comes to politics and uh, issue of election, really electioneering process in Nigeria, is that always the losers always want to give one bad name to either mm. the electoral uh, umpire or the opponent, you understand now, the winner or the party or accuse the people from one or the board, even the uh, security agencies, even the judiciary uh, constitution, uh, institutions. People like to have blame or one or the other for their failure. But let me tell you, even in the school, in the academics, when a child failed to read to pass his exam, he either blamed the teacher or he blamed the constituted authority or he said for one reason or the other he tried to give reason for his failure. But he never want to admit to it that, look, he failed to do his own assignment, to read as expected, to go and to library and make use of all the learning instruments available within the learning premises. This is what I'm telling you today is that, look, Nigerians, we should stop this system of politics, trying to blame one or the other person when we fail to win an election because it has come and gone. The same thing happened to Mr. We have seen, you have seen it during a Billy Jonathan we were handing over to Buhari. Some people cry far until Billy Jonathan said, Look, I have congratulated Buhari, he's the winner. We have seen it quite all right between uh, Tinibu and uh, Peter Obi and even uh, Atiku Abubakar. So it is now a kind of uh, traditional institution in our politics that look, if you didn't win, you just have to cry foul and go to the, to, the, to the court or tribunal to make a case, even though you know you don't have a case. It's the same thing in Kogi State. The guy knows he doesn't have a case. Out of uh, nine contestants that contest, uh, along with uh, Ududu, it is only Ajakara still in the, uh, in, in the tribunal trying to make case. What happened to the other eight? Did you see what he's seen? Are they not human beings? Nobody well, is. He was second place. He know. was second place. What happened to the top place? Is uh, Atiku not third place? You mean Dino Melai? No. Let me well, look at the uh, presidential election. Mm. Okay. You, uh, yeah. Okay. Referring to the uh, election. You understand mm -hmm. now? I think we came. Uh, I think. I, I, I think it was second. But Peter, it was Peter second. Peter was, was third. Yeah. But Peter will still make noise. Even mm. more than Atiku. So what are we saying? Mm. So it is like we should allow politics to play. Let embrace the total norms and value of what of democracy and let us be civic and let us be civilized when it comes to appreciating a winner. We should gladly and openly congratulate him, shake hands with him, and sh hand over what our blueprint, as far as our development uh, template is concerned, for the parties over to him so that he can build it or key it into his own agenda, uh, development agenda, uh, agenda. Let me tell you, it happened the same to with Abello. When he contested for the presidential election, the primary, uh, after the primary uh, you know, uh, election with uh, Tinibu, what he did, he congratulated Mr. President and he went over to give him his word, his uh, manifestos. He said, look, these are my manifestos. This is what I intended to do for Nigerians if I have eventually become the president. So since you won, congratulations, this is my manifestos. And he handed over his blueprint to him. This is a, a clear quality of what? If a true Democrat. And this is a good sign of what? Of leader that we are you know, uh, aspiring to have at national level at all state of our of our nation. So good and fine. He has he will have his own personal uh, weakness that we cannot rule it out mm. as a human being. Then, but if you look at it as an institution, democratically and leadership qualities, and when you come to you know uh, administrative of a state like Kogi State, that is a complex state, is just a mini setup of Nigeria. If you look at Kogi State, let me tell you. So if you look at it critically, you have to appreciate this man. His Excellency Governor De Ayabello, for whatever so reason. Let me tell you, last week, the, uh, the DG of Nigeria Intelligence Agency wrote an official letter congratulating him and what? Uh, appreciating his passage for his achievement over the year in Kogi State. Really, sentiment apart, if you look at this gentle guy, Yaha Adotabello, has really made a history in Kogi State. 
because the achievement he made was not just an achievement that are physical on the ground. Apart from that, there are policy he rejects in Kogi State. Because a government that comes to place, you shouldn't just start this to say, you know, he come and that hit the ground running. No, I don't believe in that slogan. No. This guy took his time, studied his, uh, the environment, look at his principal officers, he looked at the civil service, look at the, you know, uh, the areas that need to be, what to be touched. And actually, he looked at all those places and make all necessary amendments and touches where needed to be touched and reform every aspect that needs to be reformed. And there are some agencies that are, were not on board. He brought them on board. And we are formally not in what? Let me not delve into the, uh, his achievement. We are not part of the oil generating uh, state. But today, Kogi State is benefiting out of it. But, but can, can, can we speak about you know, some of the things um, dug in his name? Uh, also, we have um, the governor's wife, and I believe his nephew, involved in um, about uh, three billionaire fraud allegations. And I believe they are still under uh, talks with the EFCC. At some point, the governor's wife was <laughs> declared wanted even though uh, she was later spotted in, in different locations. So uh, I, I wonder, does this in any way touch his legacy? Because these, uh, this is a position that is not even officially in the, um, what is, how do we call it now? Constitutionally speaking, the first lady, the office of the first lady is not recognized. Yet, uh, we're hearing billions of, um, of amounts being called. Whether it's, that it's linked to the states or not, uh, the fact that someone this closely affiliated with the president, the governor, pardon me, He's having these allegations over them. Does this in any way affect them? I say this because recently there's been some uh, controversy online about um, the former Lagos governorship Labour Party candidate whose wife had some, uh, some issues. And people have been saying, well, if your wife is, does something or is caught with something, it reflects on the political career of the husband. Uh, do you think that counts in this case? <laughs> you see, you see. Let me tell you, very, very funny but interesting. We have to address this issue because it's part of the national issue that uh, need to be redressed, particularly in the media. If you look at it in Nigeria, you know we have this uh, pull him down syndrome. There are those that are mischievous even from the state or the grassroots le level. They try to mastermind how do we cook. A story even it is false let's try to hit the media and let it make a a, a, a you know a news at the news stand so that we should try to bring him down or touch him psychologically so that he, he should know that we really exist we are forced to be reckoned with even though we're in the opposition so it this is part of it in this side of it we are not all progressive and we are not all there mm -hmm. instead of us looking at things progressively let me tell you in the developed countries where you have an allegation against an individual is either you have a lot of legal institution, you file a case with clear evidence, proof of evidence against this person. This is what I'm saying. I'm not being mischievous. I'm not being selfish. I have no, I'm talking on behalf of my state. Look at it, please. With all evidence from A to the beyond reasonable doubt, then you forward it, then the legal institution will now take the case up. But up till now, it is a rumor, rumor and on the newsstand, there have not been any formal allegation against them in the court of law. Have they been you know, in, indicted by any uh, court of law that look, she has been declared wanted or all in the news of paper, you see in the pages of news of paper from one page to the other and it has been not been declared formally even from EFCC. Are you telling me if EFCC are looking for the first uh, lady of, uh, of Kogi State, they didn't know where to get her? They don't have the addresses of, uh, of his uh, residence they are here in, uh, in Abuja, the government, uh, governor, governor's lodge, or they didn't know his house there. They had, the husband have immunity. The immunity didn't cover the, the wife. So that is what we are saying. If they really have anything against the wife, I'm telling you, Mr. Mari will have taken it up against her. But really, I'm telling you, they have nothing and it is nothing against the wife. Because you look at it together, is that when your enemy is fighting you, he wants to fight from all cylinder. That is why our politics is getting... In more in mess and mess all the day, all the time, and we are trying to we, are, we find it difficult to get it right. If you are fighting somebody on a political ground, I mean, let it be progressive, let it be constructive, let it be responsible. That is why in international in the community of nation we are talking of responsible state. We want to look at people that are really responsible in their dealing, not in leadership quality, not 
only in their interrelationship with other state or other governors. No, within their leadership style, even down from whole. Culturally, we want to see the cultural value in you as what? As a leader, as a governor. We are Africans and black African for that nature. We are built on some kind of platform that are constructively, traditionally, with uh, institution with values that you look at it we respect those norms and value within our cycle particularly here in nigeria so we look at it from that perspective are you cultured what are the responsibility we rooted in you from your cultural background from your home from your parents from your ancestor we try to look at this so today we are trying to look this up because of politics no this issue of honest trust integrity should not be thrown away because of politics this is what, what we are saying today because ajaka is not in apc again he is not finding it correct mm. he's not seeing the good aspect of apc and that is wrong but this is the same person that have sat down he would sat drinks eat eat and wine with what eat and wine uh, down and wine with uh, with his excellency today he's castigating him all over where that is because of his selfish interest because if it is in the first place you have anything against his excellency you should have write a memo from a to z i have sent this memo second memo i have written to him i have organized this uh, conference this meeting with him you have this opportunity it is only when you are not in the book record of this man he said no that is now we start running to the media to try to get him very very bad very very unpleasant well, very uh, okay. very undemocratic uh, uh, undemocr uh, uh, you, you've described what would make an ideal leader the ideals and the characteristics uh, we know that governor Bello actually attempted to uh, be the flag bearer and uh, possibly the president if he emerged from the APC and now he's rounding off his tenure uh, most of the governors who he served with initially some of them are now ministers in this administration uh, some of them have moved on to be senators and so on and so forth so I'd like to get to your, what your projections could be for uh, Governor Yaya Bello, because some persons are saying, well, um, the incoming governor is pretty much his third, his third attempt at governorship. He's, he's, it's going to be an unofficial third term for him, with him playing sort of a godfather role. So uh, what are your thoughts and projections as to what's next for Governor Yaya Bello, being that the cabinet is completely full now, uh, you know, all the agencies and so on. I doubt uh, the governor would even want to head an agency. But anyway, uh, the political appointments on the national level, they are no longer available. And, uh, uh, you know, what's next for him? What, how do you see it? You see, my own personal observation and feelings for His Excellency after these years of serious uh, administrative, acrobatic uh, fall, up and down within the state and outside the state, politically, and even when you come to Kogi's system of politics, number one, I will, I will advise him to take a sabbatic, so, you know, should, to go on a, on a leave mm. at least for one year, uh, sorry, for one month. Let him relax, go back to his political diary and look at it. Let him look at the, his own territorial, you know, the map of what political map of Nigeria politically and look at it how will he compass himself looking at from where he's coming from and looking at his achievement in Kogi State looking at his position in the in North Central what is the next line of action because he needs to look at this diagram politically and look at where did he compass his direction so that at the end of the day he should know where he's going to and what is the new ground breaking ground for him so i uh, for one i'll look at him i read i read in the pages of newspaper the other day that uh he may be the next apc national chairman mm -hmm. but looking at his passing and the quality of uh, his personal trait you look at your below if you see him as a niche apc national chairman at this point because he may he will be a good candidate and to work effectively as expected as a national party chairman because of his experience with the eight years of president muhammad buhari because of his experience in what contexting the presidential election mm. against even the 
uh, the current president. So is this, is this, a, is this, a, is this a, an, a, 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 what I call it, a expected progression? It's taking yeah. to to... Yes, progression, yes, yeah, pro progression, because this is why I'm telling you why he is suitable for the candidate, for, for such a seat, and should be the right candidate. Particularly that seat is what is uh, is meant for the North Central. Not for the uh, Northwest, because Abdullah had the more have to, you know, uh, leave the seat, uh, you understand now. So Ganduje have to come, Ganduje came, came in what? As a standby person within the cycle third. Let's uh, look at the political arena of APC settle down, the government will settle down. Let's look at what direction we have. Now that we have a candidate that is suitable for that po uh, political, uh, for that position uh, from North Central, mm -hmm. I think we can now excuse Ganduji to take his leave and go and rest. So that we have somebody that is viable, strong, agile, and uh, that is ready to give the pace when it comes to meeting and deliberating with stakeholders within the party. And he has been a party member for eight years. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, Eabelo is still the chairman of a uh, national economic uh, council in charge of the in flood, flood in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yes, national, uh, national economic uh, council to him, Mr. President, he's the chairman on flood. So this is a serious assignment for him. We have this threat of flood that needed and a serious assignment to be done because we experience virtually on every two, two years. So it's a serious task before him. And let me tell you, he is one time the chairman on the another forum on security matters. He's even the chairman of uh, Nigerian governors on what, on security matters. So his architectural experience when it comes to security issues in Kogi State gives him an edge over others for him to handle community on security, particularly today we are talking of uh, security issues in the North. So he has a lot to offer as far as North is concerned, as far as the nation is concerned. But I will also warn him on this aspect, the issue of what? National APC National Chairman. Because I said, is a political suicide mission the moment you get into that post. How do you mean? Very good. If you look at it, most of those that have come on board as party chairman, ruling party chairman, end up living the, that, the, the scene, political scene, unceremoniously. Mm. It's, that is the end of their political career. Look at what happened to Amadou Ali from Kogi State. Look at even uh, uh, Bamanga Tukur. It is from uh, a PDP uh, Party chairman. He resigned. Look at what happened to Abdullah Hadamu. It was from APC National Chairman. He resigned. So you look at it. So all what I'm telling you, look at go to go to, uh, to look at it. Even uh, when you took of uh, the like of uh, uh, Amadi Gemadi from Kibeni State, the same thing happened to him until he became the, the senator. Uh, Audubi, the same thing until he was given an appointment of Minister of Agriculture for one reason or the other. Yeah. They use also uh, John uh, Egu. All these people retired as what? National chairman. They couldn't make further progress in their political career. Look at uh, Abay Mazu, Adam Mazu of Abauchi State. So that handsome guy. You see, what I'm saying is, look at it and look. It's a political suicide mission position. But I'm telling you, we knew quite all right we need the like of His Excellency uh, Governor Adota Bello in North Central, in Nigeria, and in the Northern politics, and well, in Nigeria. Well, politics. But, but from what you said now about uh, political suicide, how is that something you feel you can handle? He has to handle the likes of uh, uh, unofficially or, or de facto leader of the party, a ruling party, is the president. So we know that overall, we know President Bola Metinibu is the overall leader of the party. But he has to contend with everyone else, all the governors from the APC who are currently within the party he has to contend with the senator the abc is the ruling party on the national level and across the states they have majority do you see uh, uh, mr yaya Bello being able to handle all of this and not ending up as you've already pointed out this, this was, i'm saying look i will i will seriously mm -hmm. you know uh, draw a caution mm -hmm. of a red line for him to understand that he should have a red line when it comes to that political aspect of his career mm -hmm. as if appointed as a national party chairman because in every individual that's a member of APC that is aspiring for any position must get the signature of what of the national party chairman oh, yes. that is a specter of Yabelo if he's been appointed as a APC national chairman mm -hmm. let me look at let me tell you this is where the tax is 
it has its own advantage and disadvantage. But if he's also able to manage it well, that is to tell you that, look, he have gotten the mind and the heart and, and what they have bind in the understanding of every political uh you know a stakeholder as far as apc is concerned in nigeria because in that aspect you are going to have every the contact of every political member as far as leadership is concerned in apc nationally and even internationally because we have those leaders that are in diaspora they still con touch get in touch with what with national uh, party chairman that is number one number two he have he must know how to manage his relationship with mr president and the vice president both the senate the the, the, the senate president and the speaker because most deliberation that have to do with national issues interest will have to be discussed with what with national party chairman this is a very sensitive issue that if he comes aboard he must know how to relate with this uh, with this issue and finally as a leader he will have his also he will also have his own political ideology that he would like to set as a pace when he come on that on board because every leader come with his own, his own political philosophy or ideology so it establishing his own political understanding or political beliefs norms you understand now he must be very very careful because you must surely touch on toes you must surely tell some people that look this policy will not be accepted as far as it's concerned and this is the new direction this is the new policy some people will strongly stand against you particularly we have clear case of interest when it comes to not in policy study we have some gladiators that you know if they speak you see some aspect of this uh, country shakes and they have their world they are die-hearted followers that are among the political elite of this country so if Yabelo is coming you he needs a huge a huge political understanding a serious political you know uh, backing a serious political encyclopedia as far as pol politics is concerned in nigeria at that level for him to manage all these people because it's not going to be a, 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 a easy task for him let me tell you finally but i'm very optimistic sure that he has what is take to deliver yeah. because he is just within his 50s all right, so, uh, that, that's and uh, right. he's strong enough, and he have a heart. Understand now, yeah. for him to be to be able to manage that straight within eight years and hand over to a candidate of his choice and with the, the choice of the people. You understand now, and he stand by his principle by his words. And when his principle eight, we are not in tone with him. He came out openly and told them, "Look, I disagree and." disrespected what your sense of loyalty i will not take it so mm. with this i think he is good to go he had he had the time to say no and he has the time to say you know good so this is what i'm saying he's a good candidate for that job if mm. he has been sensitive to it every well, aspect of the job well the, you know um, it's understandable but uh, this is still a, it's just a mental exercise uh, hopefully uh we'll see how these things turn out and uh, if uh, there are updates uh, obviously, we'll be able to call on you and speak on the developments. That being said, Yahya Bello, Governor Yahya Bello, is the outgoing governor. There's a new governor, Governor Ododo, coming in this weekend. His tenure begins. Um, what are your expectations? What's, what's the advice that uh, you will give, particularly with the state of things uh, to an extent in Kogi State? I, I hear Kogi State has about 35% inflation when it comes to food. Uh, these things are expensive in the state. Uh, interestingly, for a state that connects so many other states. So, what should the governor be looking towards now uh, as he comes in? And also, to be able to stamp his own identity. Because uh, whether he likes it or not, there is a lot of talk and a lot of speculation that he might just be a figurative governor. So, at the end of the day, uh, what would you say he needs to begin to do and do differently? To ensure that this is an Ododo pres um, governorship and not seen as uh, an extension of any other persons. You see, uh, if you look at where we are today, and uh, I have never seen a kind of uh, relationship between an outgoing governor and the incoming governor, like nationally, even in all our state, mm. coming to compare it with that of uh, his excellency uh, Adobada Bello and the incoming governor his excellency al Haj ahmed usman ududu because since before the election you look at them that is within the last six months they have been working together like twins i don't know 
what sort of a political relationship is that? The loyalty is beyond comprehension. What you can understand, what we can understand. It's a good because thing. It's a good thing and extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Politically, you understand now, mm -hmm. for the state, you know, if it is built on what? Const on, construct on constructive mind and positive thinking, good and fine. We won't have anything to fear against them. Because in every bit of the last part of his excellency, I do that, Bill Luteno, you see al Haj Usman Ododo, the incoming governor, being with him, listening to him, seeing, even signing papers, budget, everything, when giving speech in his office, where to speak and where to sit down, how to go about it. In most of his outing, you see him going with uh, Ahmed Usman Ododo to visit personalities within the party, Mr. President, the Vice President, the party chairman, Ganduji, you see him visiting personalities. But, Mr. Ambad, if I will ask you this question, please, when last have you ever spotted an outgoing governor still in power that have not uh, more than uh, close to eight months that you see him with the incoming governor moving around from one point or the other trying to show him how effective he should be trying to t show him the terrain of the uh, of leadership and the political terrain of within the party so in every aspect of of it where his excellency Adola Bele has been invited for one function or the other, you see him with what? With Alhaji Usman uh, Amorudu. Is that not mentoring? On practical uh, leadership f uh, platform? He is learning practically just like an apprentice in what? In workshop, in a workshop. So he have gone all through this process. I don't think you have any uh, personal uh, grudges or misunderstanding between the two of them. So he should be able to work effectively individually as so, a pattern so without the influence of your Apple. So his mentorship, not Godfather. His no. mentorship, not Godfather is him. That is it. In that how aspect. can we be sure? The, how can we be sure that look, you will see it coming effectively after May 27, because as I, I'm, I, I'm talking to you now, yeah, Belu is expected to move from state politics to, to national politics. You can't be talking of national politics. Nigeria as complex as it is politically, and you are talking of uh, of a uh, Kogi state politics as complex as it is. You understand now? So even you as a nation, if uh, with your national assignment at that level, Kogi state is still part of it. So what we are saying that look, it is just complete separation of power national level and state level so yeah is going for a higher what expectation higher what higher demand he's going forward to a very complex and a uh, sensitive position at national level as may be decided by his excellency the president of the federal republic Nigeria, Mr. Ahmed Tunubu, then Odudu will be left over with what with the people at the grassroots within the state to manage as the governor so he yeah, below will have believed that look he has learned enough and getting enough of, of, of mentorship within this this month and he should be able to handle what his case that shows he is now going to be the governor to carry his cross so anything that is less of that as far as 20 from 20 is concerned we need to hold uh, Odudu accountable of all action in the state not here at other bill again because look he has done his farewell uh, farewell uh, you know uh, message and prayers and everything to kogi state so the button has been handed over to, to his uh Ahmed Usman. so in this aspect what we'll be expecting from him is that look the first thing we'll look at the civil service is call them for policy direction as i told you any governor coming in has his own policy direction, have his own mindset. He has seen his what his uh, his uh, predecessor. So now he's succeeding from somebody, and he want to see what where will you build upon, and how could you make some changes effectively, and to make a progress that is shift from A to B to C progressively. And arithmetically, if you look at it by every standard of calculation. All leaders want to make a difference when it comes to their tenor. So, yeah, Ahmed Usman, although His Excellency will not be different. So, he's quite sure that, look, as I'm talking to you, or he already has his own blueprint, he knows quite all right what he wants to do that is different from what His Excellency Dr. Bella has, uh, has done uh, within the eight years. So, he has his also mandate for the eight years, and he knew quite all right, look, as he's coming in now, the name has changed from Governor, His Excellency Governor Adota Bello to His Excellency Governor Ahmed Usman Ododo. So he's bearing his father's name. Whatever happened within the tenure of Ahmed Ododo, Ahmed Ododo will be held accountable. But we should run away from the from the fact that look, he has been mentored by 
uh, he had a bill. In the critical issues, he can still fall back to him and ask some question what on how to navigate and get out of complex issues in within the state. So this is it. So we expect a lot of changes. For example, if you look at it, we expect him to come first and foremost have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with top government officials. That is a core civil servant. What are your expectation what have you seen within the last eight years where do we need to improve because they are the technocrats within the state you must engage them you must work with them you must see with, uh, within them so the hierarchy of what of civil servant as far as Kogi say will be respected and we must look at it from what from experience and the quality that made every individual to be, for example, a PAMSEC, a DG, or uh, a senior director within the state, or the head of the civil service of the state. So in this aspect, we need, we, he need to work, have an interface with this class of people in the yeah. state, so that he will be able to have a very good and solid takeoff in the state. Yeah. That is number one. Number two, we expect him, as you said, to how to improve the welfare of the people and uh, the standard of living. First and foremost, uh, Kogi State is one of the agrarian uh, you know, state. He needs to improve what? Agriculture. What do you bring to the table to the people agriculturally? The issue of fertilizer to improve, to boost what? Production of uh, crops and harvest within the year. What dams do you have available that can be con converted to what to dams that uh, can, can, can be used within the for you know uh, irrigation system farming of uh, farming system within the state we we'll look at the uh, you know the, uh, the dams you have and uh, most of the rivers you have with across the state how can you convert them to what for irrigation for uh, irrigation facilities and look at it also we are talking of what of security but thank god to his excellency governor Bello, we have relatively secured the state to some certain extent it was not the kogi state we saw known in those days right, but now we hope that he will be able to build on it and have a very good uh, foundation so that things uh, economic uh, activities will flourish beyond our expectation beyond the turn of Bello, and we have a very good outing politically and economically all right dr abdullah um, uh, i have to crave your indulgence here we'll go on a quick break uh, but if you just stay with us the moment uh, so we can touch on another issue happening still in the middle belt so but thank you for coming uh, for this segment of the program thank, thank you, you very much all right we'll go on a short break uh, we still have dr Suleiman abdullah in the studio and uh, when we return we'll delve into the issue of um, insecurity particularly in uh, play two state stay with us we'll be right back of play two state uh, despite the governor's um, imposing of curfew we still continue to have attacks and uh, the people out there are crying for help uh, from the government. Um, Dr. S uh, Dr. Ablai, I'd like to get your thoughts on this. Uh, the issues we see in Play 2 seems to be reoccurring. Every other uh, administration has come and met this all the way from President Bassanjo, perhaps even before. And uh, I just wonder, what do you think is the next uh, logical step here to begin to give the people the help they really need? uh thank you for this uh, issue we are talking of a very sensitive national issue particularly when it comes to plateau state plateau state used to be one of those states that is very peaceful and uh one of the most interesting state in the northern part of nigeria and particularly when you are in those days you're talking of a middle bit and north and uh, north central yeah. because after kaduna kaduna is the administrative record of the north after Kaduna, we don't have any other place that we call ours in the north in those days, like what? Like Jos. Because the, the environment is very peaceful, the weather is, uh, is friendly. Particularly, you know, when you are talking the plateau, Mombila, uh, Mombila Plateau, yes. where you have a very good and suitable uh, environment for relaxing and uh, holidays. So you see, and uh, very close to Bauch, where you have the Yankari Game Reserve. So, with this happening in this, uh, you know, these years we have, uh, let's say, within this, uh, the starting of this uh, Fifth Republic, to be precisely, something is wrong. There is political undertone as far as the security matters is concerned in Plateau State. We'll look at it. What is the security problem? You see, let me be sincere with every one of us and our viewers at home. For you to tackle any security matter, don't just look at it from spare security point of view. Let's look at it because it must be there are some factors that are responsible to it. It could be economic factors, it could be what political factor, it could be even cultural. It could be religion. 
look at those factors. If they are combined factors, come sit down. How do we resolve it? If they are political, whose interest that is no, whose interest is not being represented as far as the government is concerned? Bring that interest. What do you want? Let's negotiate. Come to the neg negotiation table. Let's sit down among these parties. What is the problem? What do you want? Is it commissioner? Then you see, political parties' interest shouldn't be seen to be have taken too much time that look we don't have respect for human lives we don't have respect for properties because the security actual, the security of a nation is built to secure the property and the life the life and the property of the citizens if it is not there then we are running a by a banana, banana republic so it is a complete anarchy so what are we saying here is look we need to come to our senses it's not moving the security headquarters, the police headquarters there, or the army headquarters to, to plateau. So no, let the leaders come, let our leaders, particularly from the north. It's part of the north. You understand now? So you see, I, I, I'm telling you, Mr. President have too much issues at his hand to handle that it's national. So let me tell you, let the traditional leaders, rulers, institutions in the north come together. What uh, is the north with this our brother with our brothers? Uh, Let's you, look at you, it together you, first. You, you spoke about the political aspect. What if this has a religious undertone? Because there's some uh, some disturbing videos um, going on around the place. But I'd like to get your thoughts. How does one begin to resolve an issue if that could be the root cause of it? Let me tell you Mr. Madi. There is nowhere you will see a smoke without a fire. Today, I'm telling you, if you want to resolve the issue of Plateau State, I'm sure we don't want we to resolve it. Call every stakeholder politically or religious leader. What is your problem? Call them, interview them one on one. What is the problem? What is the solution? From there, you start getting the answer. Call the chairman or the imam or the amir jamaat nasrul islam or the jibwis izalas or the tarikas or the sheikh call them from plateau state what do you think is the cause of all this problem call the head of uh, the the overseer of a mountain of fire the catholics the uh, the the um, uh, what do you call it there's this old uh, this, this full, deeper lives you have all your, the redeems all call them the new generational churches and the old generation churches. bring them together bring the leaders one on one interview them what is the problem how do you think you go with it tell me what do you think is your problem with all said without any sentiment you have heard from them you know religiously call the traditional fathers how we have been having peace before the social period of time what is the problem now how do these our forefathers establish relationship without this crisis what is happening now i need to hear what is the problem from us from the emirates after hearing everybody comes together, constitute a high sensitive committee from the academics, not from the politicians. They will give a good research work with result and what conclusion and findings with what with solution and how to resolve this issue. Then you now pass it to what to the national security advisor to Mr. President. Let him bring all the head of the agencies, the six agencies, security agency, bring them together. That's NIA, DSS, you bring the police, you bring Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, bring them together and the IG. If necessary, bring the control agenda of course, Trump and uh, immigration, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the prison, bring them together. Let them sit tight and look at this aspect. What do we need to be done? That, what, is need, what do we need to do here? What is, the, what is needed to be done? What have we not, what, what, where have we not got it right? You see, when we are talking of security issues, particularly in Plateau State, it's, it pains me a lot. Because, let me tell you, I, I once lived in Plateau State, Plateau Court, in my childhood. I stayed with my aunt there. And it was a very nice, interesting uh, environment to be. And uh, in my early stage in a uh, post uh, secondary school career, I started with the uh, Plateau State School of Accountant and Management Study before I went to, to my universities. I'm telling you, that was in 19, around 1989. Very interesting friend, friend, friendly environment. Where was the problem now? So, what I'm telling you is that look, the leaders have to come together, identify the cause, the root of all this crisis. Because if you didn't go to the root, and we are just blaming the branches, and we are looking at the flowers, the fruit, and the stems, we are just making, we are just wasting our time. Let's look at the root. Traditionally, politically, religiously, from the traditional aspect of it, from religious uh, leaders, look at, let's hear from everybody. It should be a serious concern, not even for the nation, for the northerners. Because if you are talking of not, 
uh, today, let me tell you, you can't talk, give the history of North without Plateau State. You can't give the history of uh, North today completely without Benue State. And to be more sensitive to it, we ask, um, I'm taking, making a case for the North Central, where we are coming from. Let me tell you, it may sound very, very, very funny, but interestingly, if you look at it, Sardana was able to build North around five Emirates. That is so pronounced. The first one was the uh, a Sultanate Emirate from Sokoto. That is Sokoto Emirate. The second that is from northeast. The second one is what is the Kanu Emirate. That's from northwest. The third one is where is uh, uh, Bida, the Esunipe. You understand now. And the next one is we have the Zazao. We had uh, the headquarter of the northern, the, the northern, northern headquarter. Absolutely, where it is. That is where we recognize what the enemy of Zaza in, in Kaduna State. That is the fourth one. The last one was the Atta of Ibera land. When it comes to North Central, we look at this aspect. This is Nigeria, the north. This is how we work. Look at all the activities of Sadona. It's war. It's marshaled out from these four, five emirates, as I mentioned. Sokoto Caliphate. Kanu Emirate, the Zauzau, then the, uh, the Bida Esunipi, then you come to the, uh, down to the, uh, the, uh, the central, the middle bed, then the, uh, the Ibera Emirate. That is uh, from the Ataf uh, uh, Ibera land. So if you look at it constructively, what I'm telling you from these five Emirates, bring these five Emirates together. I'm not saying other traditional is are not important, are not sensitive to the northern aspect, but he have chosen this forward for administrative reasons bring them together right. you understand now mm. let them approach the album of what of uh of plateau what is the problem all right uh, i think we'll have to round it off now due to time but thank you so much dr suleiman abdullah it's um, always great to hear your thoughts and recommendations thanks for coming today thank you very much Mr. all right uh, i was um, speaking with um uh, dr suleiman abdullah on um, the kogi governance and transition from one administration to another and also we spoke on uh, just now the attacks in Plato State and the way forward possibly. Uh, don't forget the Polity reaches you live every weekday 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. So do join us once again tomorrow and uh, throughout the weekdays. Have a nice day. See you tomorrow. I am Ahmadine Obewe. Bye for now.